Good evening, everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Tonight, I'm talking about POTS and mast cell activation syndrome. I'm doing a series on mast cell. You can watch it here on YouTube, uh, about one video a week, sometimes more on this topic. What is mast cell? What is POTS? POTS stands for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Uh, it's in the last 10 years gained a lot of acceptance, notoriety as a source of fatigue for those who have been probably diagnosed as having chronic fatigue before that or labeled as having depression. And we see POTS primarily affects younger, healthy appearing females. And it is a really common issue. Now, this article I'm going to present tonight Oh, and thank you for the really nice comments. I really appreciate it. This article I'm presenting tonight is from the Journal of the American Heart Association, and it's pretty high powered in terms of what it means for the POTS sufferers and what is mast cell activation syndrome. Mast cell activation syndrome is also a rel relatively newly uh, identified entity, particularly in the last 20 years, more so in the last 10 years, and involves individuals who have a history lots of times of allergic disorders, but who may have associated symptoms of chronic fatigue, may have bone pain, may have dizziness, may have itching symptoms, may have migraines, may have gastrointestinal problems, been diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome. We're finding that the tentacles and mast cell activation syndrome are pretty profound. And I'm gonna be doing talks here hopefully soon, um, maybe even this week. Who knows? <laughs> That's the challenge uh, relative to other autoimmune disorders like celiac and multiple sclerosis and rheumatoid arthritis. So again, thank you for all the wonderful comments and I really appreciate it. It means a lot. Okay, so I'm going to hide this. I always got to put the disclaimer in the screen. None of this is medical advice. Talk to your doctor about uh, the information here if it's interesting to you. These are just ideas. I'm not diagnosing you. Just read. Uh, go ahead and pause the video and read it. Okay. All right. On to the cool stuff. So how to define POTS. Uh, They're very specific in, in this article. They actually consulted with, they took like 800 patients charts when they did the study, even though it was published in 2021, was actually done on patients charts before the pandemic. So you define POTS as having symptoms of orthostatic intolerance when there is greater than a 30 beat uh, per minute consistent or sustained change in heart rate with postural change. So the most common uh, test that's done is the head up tilt table test. And so in essence, somebody, we take their pulse, we take their EKG sometimes laying down, and then we have them stand up and they stay standing up for a period of time, a long period. And then we look to see, does their heart rate sit, stay sustained in its elevation? for that period of time? And is there not a drop in blood pressure of greater than 20 points? So if these individuals fulfilled that criteria, then they were deemed to have POTS. And so I think only 10% of the 800 cases referred to the specialty clinic fulfilled this diagnostic criteria. Is there a gray range of POTS patients who have a lot of POTS symptoms, but may not have this positive tilt table test potentially. And I think I see a lot of those individuals, but I'm just giving you the details from this research article. So if you read it, there are no surprises. Uh, okay, I'm going to show on stream. So mast cell activation syndrome, there are differing criteria on how to diagnose it. Again, this is really new, uh, really just has gained acceptance in the last 10 years. And so Dr. Afrin, who I commonly cite, wrote the book, Never Bet Against Stockholm. He's a hematologist working in an academic medical center, gets referred to all the tough cases. And he basically sees that a lot of these individuals have very similar findings to this type of bone cancer or systemic uh, hematological problem called mastocytosis. And, but they didn't have mastocytosis, but they had features of mast cell activation. So he labeled it mast cell activation syndrome. Other people had kicked around that term before him, but he really put it on the map. There are others, aside from him creating diagnostic criteria, 
Uh, I see all this to say that no one has a set consensus on this is max mass cell activation syndrome and this isn't. Dr. Afrin's criteria is that if you have symptoms of it involving two or more systems in the body and you may or may not have blood tests to support it, but you may have physical examination findings like signs of dermatographism. That's where an individual, usually a doctor, is scraping along the skin with something like a pen. And we look to see after 10 minutes if the skin is still quite red uh, from that <clears throat> insult, so to speak, to the skin. Others are saying that you have to have really high blood tests and maybe symptoms of mast cell activation, but the blood tests are not high enough to be mastocytosis for you to have mast cell activation. So the blood test they commonly cite is the tryptase. Tryptase is a protein secreted by mast cells. And again, mast cells are a type of immune cell, most notably involved in allergic disorders, but we're finding they secrete like over hundred chemicals at least. So the, you can go back and watch my testing for mast cell broadcast, but I copied the slide in and these were a lot of the tests that these researchers looked at. They looked at tryptase, uh, histamine in the blood, I believe, histamine in the urine, particularly N-methyl histamine. I don't think they looked at leukotriene. They did look at a prostaglandin D2 derivative and another prostaglandin derivative. They did not look for the KIT mutation. Uh, again, go back and watch my broadcast on that. This is the article that I'm citing. So go ahead and pause the video for any of you who want to go and find that article. It is open access. It's a great read. Okay. So then the researchers, again, 800 individuals they evaluated in the context of it. They basically whittled it down. This is common in research. Down to 69 individuals, they said, for sure, you are classic POTS. And they, in essence, divvied off about 25 of these individuals. They said, you just have classic symptoms of POTS. Uh, you have brain fog, you may have fatigue, you have heart palpitations, but you don't really have many other symptoms. And then they took 44 of the 69 and they said, well, some of you have abnormal symptoms outside of POTS, such as allergic disorders, migraines, gastrointestinal problems, dizziness, and others of you also just look purely POTS out of this group of 44 people. So again, these are individuals with brain fog, fatigue, heart palpitations, but they didn't have allergic disorders. They didn't have dizziness, migraines, things of that nature as much. And so out of this 44 individuals, they did all, all the tests that I kind of just mentioned. So they looked at their histamine levels. They looked at their tryptase levels. They looked at their N-methyl histamine in their urine. They looked at prostaglandin derivatives, I believe, in their urine. And then they did some statistical analysis. And let me show this one in stream. Um, and you can see here, it's, it's quite interesting, just looking at the data. So ESR stands for, are there, or, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, or CRP, C-reactive protein. These are inflammatory markers. So out of the 29 who had POTS, in addition to symptoms, like I mentioned, like allergies, headaches, GI problems, six out of the 28 had a high inflammatory marker. Three out of the 14 who didn't have those additional mast cell symptoms, let's just call it that. Um, three of them had inflammation. Okay, pretty similar. Trip days was seen in two out of the 23 and none out of the purely POTS. So two out of the 23 POTS plus mast cell symptoms, zero out of the nine POTS alone. Prostaglandin was seen in 16 out of the 28 POTS plus mast cell symptoms, zero out of the 15 of the POTS alone. Histamine was seen in 17, high histamines were seen in 17 individuals out of the 29 and is, who have POTS plus mast cell and zero out of the 15 of just the POTS alone. So you're starting to see a pattern. There's quite a discrepancy here. Look at this. Histamine or methyl histamine, 23 out of 29. That's like almost 80%, whereas zero out of the 15 in the POTS alone. And then they're saying here, if 
the number of individuals had at least an abnormal trip days, prostaglandin or histamine. So greater than two of these abnormal lab findings, it was about 41%, 12 of the 29, again, zero out of the 15 in POTS alone. So right there, you can see that if someone has only POTS symptoms, brain fog, heart palpitations, fatigue, particularly relative to postural changes, the probability that they have mast cell activation syndrome is fairly low. And you can see that in these numbers. Whereas if an individual has POTS, but they also have a history of atopic disorders like allergies, skin issues, gastrointestinal problems, which could be irritable bowel syndrome, could be small intestinal bacterial overgrowth symptoms, could be gastroparesis symptoms, then the chances that they have mast cell are actually quite high, as you can see. And they probably have a high probability, like an 80% probability of having a high histamine or and methyl histamine. So when individuals out there will say, you know, all POTS patients have mast cell, you can actually say time out, go read this research article. Not all POTS patients have signs and symptoms of mast cell activation syndrome. A certain percentage definitely do. And the ones that do, it's pretty definitive. So I really like this table too from the article because it's, it's pretty uh, representative of looks like what's accurate. So um, just going further, it's, this is further looking at the symptoms. So you can pause the video. I'll look at this uh, table three. Um, migraines appear to be pretty common in this POTS plus mast cell group um, versus basically the normal laboratory test group, POTS alone. Um, but it wasn't actually statistically significant. So um, the authors did not conclude that migraines were a mast cell symptom, although go back and watch my broadcast on migraines and mast cell outside of POTS. Uh, there definitely seems to be a histamine component to migraines, at least in part. <clears throat> and what is the conclusion? The conclusion is that if you have been diagnosed with POTS and you also have a history of allergies. If you have a history of skin issues, such as urticaria, you would think of those as kind of like hives, welts. Uh, if you have a history of gastrointestinal problems, um, you the probability of there being some sort of abnormal mast cell test that would pop up is high. The researchers cite in here, and this is what I've seen clinically, is that mast cell testing is not similar from lab to lab. Some labs have much better mast cell activation syndrome testing than others. And unfortunately, at this point in time in 2022, March, um, not all these labs are kind of created equal when it comes to mast cell testing. So lots of times I may have patients drive a couple hundred miles to have testing done at one lab. It may sound uh, excessive, but it's actually been pretty fruitful in helping with the diagnosis and certainty of what is going on in these individuals. If you don't have access to these mast cell tests that I mentioned, then you may just want to say if you have POTS and you have these other symptoms, allergy, skin, and GI issues, then the probability of there being an abnormal lab test relative to mast cell is actually pretty high. And you might be able to rest assured in that, again, conversations for you and your doctor to have. So. Uh, I hope this was helpful and let me know any questions you have. Um, gosh, I'm always bad at putting this in here. Um, there we go. So you can email us at info at gatesbrainhealth.com. That's lots of times just kind of the easiest way to get questions answered. I do check YouTube, but I miss sometimes not. I don't always see all the comments. So if you have a question, or a topic for a video, send it to me at info at And I hope you all have a wonderful evening. All right, thank you so much.